Esteemed participants, I would like to welcome you all uh, to our uh, important uh, insights sharing meeting on this webinar. We will have esteemed guests to, uh, from the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry and other esteemed guests as well. We would like to thank them all for being with us today. I would briefly like to talk about our project in the EU uh, funded Eat Food. Uh, is uh, has uh, concluded that our project citizen food turkey and malta uh, has uh, been acceptable uh, to receive funds from them and uh, we are actually in turkey uh, the uh, first project who has received a grant as an, a foundation as an association our aim is to uh, increase trust in local produce and uh, to uh, prevent waste by raising awareness in society. The world population as of last week has reached 8 billion for the first time and projections show that this population will reach 9.8 billion in 2050 and uh, when we look at it today this is actually a terrifying uh, figure because we are uh, we have no projections as to how the world resources will be able to uh, nourish these uh, this population. Uh, we see that there are, needs to be an increase of 60% in uh, uh, food projection by 2050, but how this is going to come about, of course, is something we have to work on. However, studies also show, research also shows that uh, this food crisis, which will increase parallel to the population, can not only be solved by increasing production, we need to also uh, take a look and review as to the current practices in terms of uh, food waste, and uh, the work of the uh, UN and the EU are also emphasized emphasizing uh, the prevention of waste in food. In uh, worldwide, uh, this waste is about 1.8 billion tons, and uh, only, we're preventing only one-fourth of this uh, waste. Uh, we can, in that sense, uh, feed 830 million people who are fighting uh, starvation at the moment in the world. Of course, food waste is not just food thrown uh, into the waste bin or leftovers in restaurants. We need to look at it in a broader framework from uh, sustainable food production to um, being very careful in using resources themselves. When we look at research, most of us believe that we are actually not wasting food. But when we go into detail, we see that there is a lack of awareness uh, on this topic. And to be able to prevent this, oh, there are some small practices that we can do in our homes, which will make great difference uh, for uh, for all this. Today, uh, before leaving the uh, word to our esteemed uh, uh, speakers, I would like to talk to you about uh, the work that we're carrying out uh, in Turkey as an association to raise awareness. We want to look into uh, the reasons and practices uh, of food, food production and food waste because we believe as a, as a foundation that the root of the problem is understanding uh, the issue first. And Professor Erol is the head of our uh, research for uh, Food Waste 2022, uh, which was enacted in September this year for different social economical groups in Turkey. 2,400 uh, people were interviewed and uh, our aim was to uh, have have the uh, most recent uh, data and results for food waste and awareness of food waste. Uh, I would like to give you a few highlights of this research as well. Uh, one in 10 people uh, who joined uh, decide that uh, the food has uh, rotted by, by smelling it. And about one in six uh, prefer to give uh, the uh, unconsumed food to uh, stray animals on the street. And uh, many believe that um, the food waste uh, actually means um, uh, food uh, beyond the uh, deadline uh, for waste. And of course, uh, the uh, awareness for not wasting food seems to concentrate on purchasing as much as you need, only as much as you need. And uh, 
a 3.6 uh, slices of bread is being consumed by the uh, participants, apparently, according to the research, because part of our research was conducted on the topic of bread. Uh, be, the participant said that the food that was mostly wasted in Turkey uh, was bread. That was the general idea. Uh, however, when we ask them whether you're wasting food in your homes, majority says no. So there is this uh, an issue, uh, this uh, conflict and con contradiction. And uh, the question says whether there are any leftovers of bread after a, a meal. Uh, six out of 10 say no. About 75% of the participants uh, believe that bread is the most wasted uh, food, but they also believe that it is possible to uh, use it once more by using it as um, fundamentally for uh, meatloaf or uh, for uh, other food and uh, for uh, giving to stray animals. So uh, people uh, generally believe that uh, the part of bread that is thrown away is the part that cannot be consumed anyway. So they believe they're not wasting it. So we believe that this is very important in raising awareness uh, in society as to uh, what actually a waste is in terms of food. And that is the um, focus of the work of our uh, foundation. About uh, 700 million is fighting starvation and more than 630 million are fighting obesity. This is unfortunately a very a sad contradiction as well. All stakeholders and countries need to have the same vision and same determination in fighting food waste. And this is critical for the morrows. And uh, therefore, all together, we need to fight uh, waste. Uh, now, I would like to leave the word to our first speaker, uh, to uh, Zeynep Özkan from the Ministry of uh, Agriculture and uh, Forestry uh, for uh, EU uh, Connections. And she's going to uh, talk to us about uh, food waste and what we can do against it. Please, the floor is yours, Zeynep. Uh, dear guests, I am Zeynep uh, Özkan. Uh, I am uh, from the Ministry of Agriculture, responsible for uh, the EU connections and also the project coordinator of Protect Your Food projects. I'm going to talk to you about our projects that we are undertaking to wa prevent waste and talk to you about how we can prevent waste in our homes by the few simple practices. How would I prevent uh, food waste and why is it important? As you know, in the previous weeks, the world population reached uh, 8 billion, and it is projected that uh, world population will reach 10 billion by 2050. So in order to feed this increasing population, we need to increase food protection by at least 60%. But besides that, also, there is a significant uh, food uh, waste uh, uh, each uh, night, one in 10 people go to bed uh, hungry. And, and on the other side, obesity and excess uh, nutrition is also a fact present in the world. So one third of the food that we produce, we are throwing away. And this is as much as the um, landscape of, of China. Think of China as, as a country, as it's... Um, Food, it's, it's, there's food all over it that is being wasted. This is billions of tons. This is a very significant problem. Uh, food waste is uh, present uh, both in industrialized countries as well as in developing countries. We know that the food chain is a diverse uh, field. And in developing uh, countries, um, we see the food loss from the production stage to the consumption stage and the homes and industrial uh, and uh, developed countries, uh, we uh, see this food waste in the, in the um, uh, end consumer uh, part. Uh, so unfortunately, here in annually, we throw away 18.1 million tons of uh, food in uh, the uh, uh, waste collection centers in the municipalities. We see that more than 50%, actually 52% of the waste material there is food. So more than 
paper more than uh, aluminum, more than uh, other materials, we are throwing away food and we have to actually prevent this. We are throwing away 5 million bread every week, every day. And uh, from production until to our homes and after our homes, again, we are throwing away half of the food that we buy. Actually, 500 billion TL is the revenue of the uh, food sector uh, in Turkey. So if, uh, if we could pretend 2% of all this waste and throwing away, we will have about uh, 10 uh, billion uh, Turkish liras of savings. So as a ministry, uh, as the Minister of Agriculture, agriculture and forestry, uh, as well as the, the public uh, organizations, as well as the private organizations, as well as the, uh, the uh, society itself. Uh, it's important and we can prevent this waste by a very few small things that we do. In general, we can talk about uh, food waste. We can see in general uh, from the harvest uh, until the, uh, the the sales, we call it the loss of food. And after that, uh, from the supermarket to home, uh, we call it food waste. Actually, uh, for in the first part, food loss is 14%. And in the after the second part in the food waste, it's one part third uh, one third of the uh, production and this is what we where we can do something about we are not just throwing away food we are also uh, wasting the, uh, the 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 water the the labor the the soil the uh, all the materials we need to to package it and to distribute it uh, the uh, the fuel we are also throwing away all of these as well so when you are throwing away one piece of food we are not just throwing at that food we're throwing away everything that we need to produce it this is especially uh, true for um, uh, ox meat production, uh, animal uh, food production, especially the usage of water is excess uh, from the uh, production of uh, meat and animal uh, food. Uh, we are actually for one kilogram of meat, we can see we have 15.5 thousand liters of water spent. So when we uh, waste one kilogram of meat, we are also wasting uh, 15.5 thousand tons of uh, water uh, as well. I talked about this as well. If we remain in front to some topics today, then tomorrow uh, we will not be able to find uh, healthy food. So in that sense, both as the ministry and as the developing changing trends, we cannot see this in a linear uh, perspective. We need to have a, a circular uh, food system uh, and the zero waste system. Uh, we need to look, uh, ma manage uh, the recycling, uh, the production, uh, the consumption, uh, waste management, all of these factors. And this is what the uh, UN is telling us as well. We have sustainable development goals, number two, uh, ending uh, starvation and uh, another uh, responsible production. And uh, so we are cooperating with the UN uh, Food and Agriculture Agency uh, to uh, uh, work on a project saying uh, protect your food. Uh, we started uh, the preparations in 2018 and we work with all the stakeholders in the sector, public and private, university, academia, and uh, we were uh, very adamant on having uh, a multi-stakeholder uh, uh, action plan, and we have about 10 actions, uh, 100 actions already laid out uh, to prevent uh, food waste in uh, Turkey, because this is not just uh, limited to a single organization, to a single public organization or private organization or academia. We have to work all together to be able to uh, ensure this. So our action plan, what kind of a strategy and action plan we have, what kind of a methodology we have, this reverse pyramid that you can see on the uh, screen is the hierarchy of, of prevention of uh, food uh, waste. What our true aim is to have people uh, 
consume the food that is produced for people. We are actually producing and manufacturing that food for, of course, a commercial activity. And uh, of course, every stakeholder uh, needs to uh, receive from that chain of production and consumption uh, their, their due in that sense. So we have to actually uh, have a complete surveillance on the complete chain to prevent points where we uh, have a losses and uh, production. So first, that is the first step, prevention and mitigation. And second step here, if when we cannot do that, we need to save it and redistribute it. Of course, uh, we need to have people who are in need of food, need this food uh, with free of charge and in decent ways. When we cannot do that either, the next step is to use it as animal feed, because in that sense, of course, food security rules are very important for both people and for animals as well. And sometimes for animals, the rules are even stricter. So uh, when you think that uh, you are not wasting your food and say you're giving away to stray animals, I would like to warn you, uh, these animals uh, can become blind after uh, six to uh, eight weeks of consuming that uh, because uh, it, the, there is in animals a necessity to watch for the carbohydrate uh, percentage and concentration of animal uh, feed. Otherwise, you are harming them rather than helping them. So, and when, when you cannot do that either, the next step in the methodology is recycling. We, we can uh, collect uh, organic waste, we can compost it and produce energy from that. And uh, the most unwanted uh, circumstance that we have is that it is thrown into the garbage and wasted. So we started in 20, uh, May uh, 2020 with our campaign of uh, Protect Your Food in uh, the uh, Ministry of uh, Agriculture and Forestry and uh, Provincial Directorates in 81 provinces in Turkey um, actually contributed a lot. And with our activities, uh, we had a lot of um, awareness raised. We were on the billboards, we were in uh, the uh, bus stops, we were there in the Instagram and Twitter and um, TV as well. And, and we uh, actually, uh, organized uh, workshops and uh, volunteer uh, harvest uh, organizations where volunteers uh, harvested food, leftover uh, food and produce in the fields uh, and um, distributed it to people of need. So we have our awareness activities uh, for people from 70, 77 active as well. And we have also issued five different guidelines uh, for uh, logistics and and uh, for prevention of uh, food waste in restaurants or other uh, mass uh, organizations. Another has to do uh, with uh, uh, compost uh, uh, production uh, and uh, for uh, food uh, sales points, how to prevent and uh, similar uh, fields of work. We can also uh, access our website for uh, these uh, guidelines as well. We also have a phone interview throughout Turkey uh, to uh, see uh, what kind of uh, action and um, impact our campaign had. So we had it initially. Uh, we see what you see on the screen is our uh, one year of results of at the end of the first year of our campaigns. As you can see, there is a significant visibility of the uh, campaign. Uh, $80 million uh, is the savings amount worth in the first year. You know, people started to shop more consciously, to cook more consciously, to control portions, and to uh, keep a leftover food and reuse leftover food. Uh, and uh, we have uh, created a significant awareness in society. Another important point is uh, has to do with the awareness about the uh, dates uh, the uh, on the packages. Uh, we try to explain the difference between uh, best use before and uh, a final date and, and deadline for use. So, uh, 
must be used before date is actually reserved for meat and similar uh, uh, feed. And these kinds of food, like meat and uh, dairy and uh, similar food, needs to be uh, uh, carefully checked for uh, cons to be consumed before this date. You know, you need to have very careful checks and controls about the dates for that, because uh, they, although you might not be able to see or smell it, they are uh, they they need to be actually uh, they, there can be some micro. Uh, uh, organisms there so cannot be consumed but otherwise there is another type of label which says best used before for other types of food like uh, maybe uh, legumes and um, other types of, of food you can see that uh, it might be possible to use these types of uh, food uh, because they are not prone to uh, micro uh, organisms of course, if you see any sign of corruption, see or smell any sign of corruption, you should not use it. But other than that, it is different than the uh, meat and uh, dairy. So, so in that sense, uh, we also have uh, Guinness uh, rec records with uh, the results that we have received in our campaign as well. So uh, we have to stop um, food waste because uh, it is not uh, just waste of food, but it means a waste of all the work that we have done to produce that uh, piece of food. The visual that you see on the screen is the work that we have done in the field for the harvest, the packaging, uh, the logistics, uh, the supermarket, and the food that we have that we do not um uh, save uh, but waste and from that uh, to back to uh, landfills so this is how we throw away 18.1 uh, tons, civilian tons of food in Turkey. So we have all a similar uh, responsibility uh, as all parties. But what you can do today as, uh, in that sense, um, consumers, what you can uh, do, uh, and you can maybe... Um, Maybe you are preserve it, preserving it in the wrong way. Maybe you have cooked an excess amount uh, or you have maybe two large portions or maybe you might have some concerns about the visuals of the of the food. Uh, maybe you might not uh, have been in a position to read the labels correctly or you might have shopped in excess. So uh, with very simple practices, we can uh, prevent food waste in our uh, kitchens. So first of all, we all have our uh, cell phones, or if not that, then a pen and paper. Please make a shopping list before you go. Check your cupboards, check your uh, kitchen. Uh, because most of us, when we drop by the supermarket after work, uh, we uh, sometimes uh, shop some things that are already there at home. And then we go home and we say, oh, I already had this at home. And we ask ourselves why we uh, bought that. So uh, let's not forget that shopping lists are very important. And please remain true to your uh, list. Sometimes campaigns and promotions um, move us towards buying more than we actually need. But when you cannot consume what you buy, uh, then that campaign is not good at all. You know, give you let me give you an example like this. You think that uh, maybe uh, you think that uh, food is wasted mostly by a high income or uh, 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 upper income or medium upper income level. But no, uh, not uh, a lot of people who uh, are actually fooled by these campaigns, the promotional campaigns, so by more than they need also in lower income groups and so all this is food that is wasted as well so let's not please uh, buy as much uh, only as much as we need if we are buying more let's please preserve them as stated on the labels and uh, let's give a chance to uh, also uh, mis misformed uh, produce. Uh, you cannot see them in the supermarkets because they're sent back. When, but when you go to the local markets, produce markets, you see them as well, especially if you're going to um, make something like soup or jam.
jam or jelly, please give these uh, produce also a chance. Aesthetics does not really mean anything. They are all uh, nutritious uh, produce and valuable produce. Please check the uh, uh, temperature of your uh, refrigerator. It has to be between one and four degrees. If when it goes over four degrees, then your food in there will uh, uh, be corrupted very easily. Please remember that uh, the, uh, the 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 door uh, of the uh, of the of a refrigerator, the cover of the refrigerator where we put the glasses, like milk, uh, is actually the warmest region and uh the the bottom part of the refrigerator is uh, where we put the produce is actually the coldest part so if you would place your meat and your cheese uh there on the bottom part of the refrigerator you will notice that they remain fresh a uh, much longer so uh in that sense uh please be very careful about uh your uh refrigerator's temperature and uh, the performance so when you were shopping, let's say you had uh, uh, tomatoes at home and then you shopped a little bit more from the supermarket, then please use the rule of first in, first out. So please then uh, put your uh, the, the tomatoes that you already had in your home to the front part and put your new tomatoes in the back so that you will use the older tomatoes first. And please, uh, if, if you organize your refrigerator, you can... Uh, uh, prevent uh, missing uh, some uh, of uh, the um, maybe produce or uh, fruit that was uh, there already. Uh, you can freeze, deep freeze your uh, food. Uh, if you're going to use only a small portion of the food that you purchased, please uh, do deep freeze the rest and then you can take them out later. You can maybe pre- uh, uh, pre-cook some of your uh, vegetables to, before deep freezing or uh, uh, or in that sense, if you have leftovers from your meals that you're not going to consume at once, you can also, uh, in in the few hours after uh, it, it is uh, cooked, you can also uh, deep freeze it. Uh, don't deep freeze it if it has stayed longer outside. Uh, please be also aware of food poisoning. You need to, if you are going to put your leftovers uh, in in the uh, uh, deep freeze section, do it in, at most a few hours after uh, after uh, cooking, after eating. So for deep freeze uh, food, uh, a, a, there's actually uh, no final day to be consumed, but we do uh, recommend that they be consumed in uh, six months' time. I have to say that it is a very, very low chance of food poisoning for uh, this uh, for uh, longer uh, times in uh, deep freeze. Um, I will give you an example. For example, you have uh, if you have, for example, um, a, a poultry uh, or, or meat that uh, you have uh, bought, purchased from the supermarket and uh, the uh, last consumption date is two days after that, but if you deep freeze it immediately, then that date will be invalid and you can keep it for six months in your deep freezer as well. So uh, if possible, please use uh, new labels uh, or for these uh, deep freeze of food in that sense. So after uh, last consumption date, if it's that's the wording on the label, then please do not consume it after this date. But after best use before dates, you can consume it if they are still uh, okay. So sometimes reusing is uh, very important. Sometimes uh, we throw away uh, some food, although it can be reused and repurposed in that uh, sense. And we do have a lot of uh, tips uh, for you. Uh, you can also follow our Instagram account for more tips on how to reuse or repurpose some of the uh, food. Uh, bread is um, one a type of food that is wasted the most in uh, Turkey. So in that sense, uh, please do not forget, for example, that you can uh, use uh, one uh, bread uh, partially and deep freeze the rest 
text or uh, you can uh, also uh, make use of uh, stale uh, bread as well for other uh, purposes. And also, please, let's be a little bit more creative and repurposing uh, bread and leftovers as well. Um, we can also check our portions for uh, our meals you know if we would put smaller portions on our plates uh, it would also prevent food waste or we can maybe share uh, this uh, food of with people who need it or maybe our neighbors even if they don't need it uh, it might be an option as well and let's recycle uh, will uh, please we have a guideline on how to compost in uh, in your balcony or if you have a garden in your garden please um uh, also um recycle uh, your uh, waste and uh, with your compost you can have a very uh, nutritious um fertilizer for your garden as well and it also helps to reduce our food waste as well a good compost is uh, actually very rich in terms of uh, plant nutrition so actually this is a very big contribution to our environment to our world as well because compost enriches the soil and uh, preserves the uh, humidity of the soil and you can use it for your own garden as well here is uh, here you see the distinctions how to compost for your homes you have the uh, green materials uh, fruit waste and the uh, vegetable waste and we have the uh, brown materials and uh, you can also uh, do a quick search on the internet or look up our guideline to how to uh, compost for this fertilizer and when you do it correctly there is no smell either and uh, you can see here uh, which materials you can and cannot use for composting is also given in the guideline as you can see on the screen as well uh, we can have uh, oil animal food uh, which you should not uh, be using so it's very important for correct composting so if you've decided to reduce food waste yourself uh, you can have this simple practice um, uh, maybe some of you will know when you go to a dietitian before writing you a diet, they first ask you to write down what you need daily uh, for three days and bring it to them. Sometimes we think that we don't eat anything, but we are, you know, uh, gaining weight. You know, it's the same. Uh, we are. We think now that we are not wasting uh, food, uh, but then when you look at it, why is fifty two percent of our waste uh, food? Uh, so uh, there, you can do um, a daily. Uh, routine for yourself and write down uh, what you need, uh, uh, what you eat and what you don't eat uh, uh, per day. This is uh, something that you can download uh, from our website. Uh, this is the food waste prevention uh, timetable uh, that you can use very easily. Thank you very much uh, for uh, your attention in listening to me today. I want to uh, I wanted to talk to you about how this campaign of protecting your food came about and how you can reduce food waste in your homes with very simple practices. Thank you very much. We would like to thank Zeynep Oskan for this valuable uh, information. Now I would like to uh, also leave the word uh, to uh, uh, Mr. Selim Kaplan from the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry, again, uh, Head of Food Facilities and uh, CODES for his uh, speech. Please, sir, who's yours? Hello to everyone. First of all, I would like to thank the Sabri Care Foundation for such a webinar and for inviting us to speak here. And I would like to greet all of our uh, audience. My name is Selim, uh, Selim Kaplan from the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry, Head of Food Facilities and Codex. And in this uh, webinar, I would like to talk to you about uh, food literacy. Why is food literacy important? I would like to inform you briefly about these topics. Of course, as the ministry, as a Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry, we are responsible for um, legislation, for procedures, for controls, and a supervision of uh, food from uh, the uh, 
field uh, to the homes. And, and as a department, we are preparing uh, food legislation in uh, parallel to the international regulations and EU regulations, as well as the, uh, uh, the laws and regulations of our country. And of course, uh, supervisions and controls is among our primary uh, duties. But as I always say, uh, also uh, the greatest uh, controller and checkpoint is the consumers themselves. And to be able to do that, we need to have an awareness on uh, being uh, um, literate uh, in terms of food. So that means that what are we going to understand from what we read on food, on labels, and how are we going to understand and comprehend them? This is what I want to talk about today. Of course, this is important for uh, uh, balanced diets, uh, balanced nutrition, as well as prevention of waste. Of course, uh, it is the basic right of every human being to have, have access to food. And uh, the, we have two main topics on this one is uh, food security and uh, food assurance and uh, food assurance is actually the the fact that all of our citizens have access to healthy food in a sustainable manner in a continuous manner food security on the other hand is the uh, fact that the food that the people consume should not be harmful to their health and that the necessary measures be precautions be taken for this as as I mentioned, some of our uh, consumers are not aware of these, uh, the fact that I would like to remind you once again, the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry the, is the only official body that is responsible for uh, food uh, issues in our country from the field until the table of the consumers. Our ministry is responsible for everything in terms of the field, uh, the harvest, of course, the, the correct implementations there, the pesticides, the health issues there, and then the, the packaging and distributing, preservation. We are all responsible for controlling and supervising all this. We have 7,500 uh, controllers in the field uh, doing uh, food uh, controls and checks and uh, our analyses are carried out regularly for all stages of uh, food by our ministry. As I said, food literacy is our topic here. What should we understand when we talk about food literacy? And this has to do with uh, access to information and data about the food that we are consuming. Uh, but having access to them is not sufficient. We need to be able to understand them as well. So uh, we need to be able to evaluate and analyze the data that we get. And so uh, thus be able to uh, co correctly decide on a healthy diet for ourselves as well. Of course, uh, with the increase in awareness for food literacy, uh, of course, the perception and awareness of uh, the healthy the importance of healthy nutrition is also increasing in society and uh, it's uh, food literacy is not limited to uh, as I said before um, balanced nutrition it is also very important for prevention of food waste so our consumers definitely need to have uh, food literacy to be able to prevent food waste as i said uh, this has to do with the access of uh, access to data on the food that we consume where do we get this data Back, actually, for packaged foods, it is the label. The food labels need to be uh, um, accessible and also uh, comprehensible uh, by us. And for issues that we are wondering about, the, the, the right source to answer this is the Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry and uh, our uh, department. Of course, we are in an age of internet. There are a lot of information on the internet, but as you know, uh, it is um, and not screened. So therefore there is some, uh, some misinformation also stated there. So uh, in that sense, it is very important to uh, get your information from uh, professionals uh, on in their fields as well 
Of course, when uh, when it is used correctly, it is a very good platform. I'm talking about social media, but uh, unfortunately, uh, there's also a lot of misinformation there as well, which can be distributed very swiftly. So the the information that we need that we get from social media definitely needs to get verified by uh, trustable sources, reliable sources, uh, definitely. And uh, apart from these uh, platforms, uh, we have, uh, for example, um, specialists or peers or family that inform us about food, uh, for example, teachers and are doing school and then family. And uh, at this point, uh, the food literacy of parents is very important because they will be the ones training their children and increasing the awareness of their children for um, food literacy in the future as well. And uh, as I pointed out, uh, what, what is the most uh, important source for um, data for packaged food was labels. I would like to talk a little bit more about labels because, you know, food is a very, very comprehensive and extensive topic. As you know, there are different um, comments and interpretations and in social media and the internet. There are a lot of words and a lot of things going around and we have limited time here. So it's not possible to address them all, but uh, we are all consumers for packaged food. So I wanted to concentrate on uh, labels because it's very, very important for us to be able to read and understand food labels. Uh, what labels are and what they contain is something I would like to uh, elaborate on. Uh, food labels, are placed on uh, food packages in different ways, in different methodologies. And definitely, uh, and, and the label has to be present on the package in one way or another. Uh, so uh, when, as consumers, we purchase products, uh, we uh, need to check that there are uh, the the labels because uh, and and we need to check the labels for also preservation conditions uh, because even that is present on the labels how to preserve this specific food in that sense and uh, the name of the product that you uh, want to uh, purchase uh, is is placed on the label so is the product that you want to buy uh, the product that's stated on the label uh, the uh, the country where it is produced is stated uh, the the data for the the manufacturer is stated on the label and also the the contents the ingredients is uh, stated and and the nutrition uh, table uh, nutrition graph is also uh, stated on the uh, labels uh, and also some special warnings some some individuals may have allergies or intolerances so all this data is also given on the um, labels and uh, also another very important thing is that the uh, the last consumption date or best use before date are also given on the uh, on the labels as well as the preservation conditions for that specific uh, food material is stated on the labels and then some compulsory uh, data as whether it has any uh, allergens containing allergens or containing alcohol are also stated in the uh, label as well so I would like to explain briefly uh, why these are important. Why is the name of the uh, product important? Uh, why is it stated? You know, all of the food have um, either you know, official names or some uh, defined names uh, or some traditional names there. Um, for example, what we can think of uh, milk, pasteurized milk, for example. Uh, so uh, the, the pasteurized, or, uh, pasteurized milk or UHT milk is already defined in the procedures of the, uh, of the ministry as well. Why is this important? This is important because we need to be able to uh, get the right product that we need sometimes. Uh, so 
sometimes we buy something that we don't actually uh, need mistakenly and we only check the label after we go home and then unfortunately we don't return it either we just just throw it away when you don't consume it at all for and the name also is important in the sense for example uh there is uh, products that are sold under the name of kosher cheese and then toast cheese and uh, you see there are there is a difference they might both look the same but uh kosher cheese is uh the traditionally defined kosher cheese whereas toast cheese is actually melted cheese from other leftovers in the production site so actually uh, uh so these are two different products i'm not saying that the melted cheese is a bad product it shouldn't be purchased i'm just saying that you should be aware of what you purchase and that's how you should check the names of the products another uh, issue has to do with chocolate uh, again for example chocolate has uh, been already defined in the procedures and ministry um, in that sense there is uh, cocoa cocoa oil and other ingredients uh, uh, present in the uh, chocolate and cocolin is also uh, contained there so uh, this is not uh, actually bad for health, uh, but uh, it is not the same because, uh, you know, it's a different in quality, cocolin. So you should be careful about what is, is contained, what is named as chocolate and not named as chocolate in that sense. And of course, uh, products containing fruits uh uh, are uh, different in terms of fresh or concentrated or aroma products are different and aromas does, uh, and does not actually contain fruit juice, but only the aroma and taste of that uh, fruit. For example, when you say uh, uh, orange aroma or apple aroma means that these products do not contain the juice of that uh, fruit, only the aroma of that uh, fruit. So, and... Uh, so these are important points to notice, and this is all actually given within the name of the product. So therefore, it's very important to check the names in uh, purchasing the product that you want to buy, knowing all of these differences. And of course, you said uh, the the net amount, uh, net weight is also present in the um, labels. Why is this important? Uh, it's also for us to check whether this is um, enough for us in terms of its amount, and uh, and we need to we need in order not to purchase more than we need. And if it is a uh, product uh, that can uh, be corrupted swiftly and easily, uh, we need to uh, also check uh, whether uh, it is uh, uh, the right amount that we want to consume because if we cannot maintain it and preserve it under the conditions given in the uh, label then it will be a waste again in that sense and the uh, the nutrition also, the uh, net weight and net amount gives us the amount of uh, nutritious value for that amount uh, of food in that, uh, in that sense. And also the origin uh, country, the country of uh, production is also given in the, uh, in the, in the labels as well. Um, it can be, you can say the original uh, country uh, of origin might be uh, Turkey, and uh, there is also uh, the logo of uh, local uh, production. Local production is a logo developed by the Ministry of Agriculture. But this does not actually mean country of origin because sometimes some products, the, the raw materials of which are uh, brought in from other countries, but processed in our country can also be given this logo. But in the label for us, the origin, country of origin is uh, where the, the production is uh, originating from. So it's not the same as the uh, local production logo. 
In that sense, the name of the manufacturing facility as well as the uh, registration and uh, uh, verification number given by the uh, by the ministry also needs to be in the uh, labels which they are present on the labels they need to check especially for uh, animal based products uh, like meat and cheese and uh, milk uh, production facilities need to get a special uh, verification from the uh, from the ministry and uh, that number starts with actually the license plate number of the city where it is produced as uh, well as followed by the verification number. And then there is the verification number, the, the, the registration number, sorry. And that registration number is a number uh, that is allocated to all production facilities. Uh, and there it's a little bit different than this verification number for animal produce. Uh, we have the we have the the letters and then uh the uh license plate of the uh, province where it is produced and then another registration number this is important because this is um the only way to uh, to prevent and to fight against illegal production facilities unregistered and unhealthy production facilities if there this registration number is not present on the label you should you can be sure that this product was produced in an illegal facility with no control from our ministry and and the consumers should be aware of this and should not uh, purchase the products uh, without these uh, uh, numbers and they also when they come across such a case it's important that they report it to our hotlines as well uh, this is important for production uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, protecting our consumers and in terms of fighting uh, unfair competition as well. So we do uh, ask our consumers to check the food labels for the uh, verification or registration number uh, given by the ministry. You might think, uh, okay, there might be a number uh, there on the label, but is it correct? So there is an internet website where you can uh, query all the registration numbers. It is open to all consumers and everyone. Gıda Güvenliği Bilgi Sistemi, it's a longer name, uh, Food Safety uh, Database, uh, ygbs.parim.gov.tr is the website where you can see all the facilities that have been registered or verified by our ministry and therefore any uh, product that they purchased they can check the number on the label from this website to see whether it is authentic or not as i stated uh, in the beginning uh, the other data that should be present on the labels include uh, also indicate the ingredients. The ingredients all state what uh, is the composition of the product that you have purchased in terms of the uh, ingredients contained in it. Of course, sometimes you see on the Sometimes it says ingredients, sometimes it says composed or components. In the list of ingredients, uh, there the list is made uh, with the uh, with the highest amount ingredient being in the beginning. From so from the highest amount to the lowest amount, the the ingredients are ranked and listed in the uh, in the label. As you can say that in some uh, food material, some package material, there is no ingredients part on the label. You are right. Some uh, products have been uh, kept exempt uh, 
from this list, for example, uh, salt or sugar, they are not uh, sometimes given uh, because they are in every uh, product. So you should be careful about that as well. So, so this is important in terms of noting uh, what is the highest concentration of which ingredient in uh, which product, but also uh, to be able to see what uh, preservatives or additives allowed by our ministry is also included in that product. And these are also included in the ingredients side. Uh, so any product that you purchased, uh, you can check whether they have any preservatives or additives or aroma um, materials from the ingredients. You know, a lot of people ask what these e-codes are for additives and uh, preservatives. You know, you often see them in the ingredients. The e-code is... Uh, has been uh, evaluated by uh, the European Union uh, authority uh, to to check that it has it is not harmful to human health. Uh, that's what E means. And so there is the E, and then a number uh, for the specific type of additive. So these E coded. Uh, ingredients are uh, additives and they are present on the list of EU. And so uh, we are also using this list of EU to uh, to to check for the additives, the, to, to use the e-codes, for example. Uh, uh, cysteine, for example, is an additive. I don't really remember the number there, but it is complete made from human hair and and, and that is this human uh, other materials and these are all the words that going around all the uh, comments going around in social media of course i would like to point out that this is definitely not the case you know we are uh adhering to the eu list in that sense but we are also deferring from it uh, in line with our own uh, traditions in our line with our own culture as well for example uh, uh pork and uh, any uh, uh, additives or preservatives uh, with uh, with pork or, or is uh, actually not uh, imported to our country at all, and it is stopped uh, at the gates at the borders, and it is not um, into the uh, local market at all. And uh, we are also definitely not uh, allowing any uh, consumption of additives with the, uh, from, from the human body uh, as well. So it is not possible in our country to have any additives uh, with, with pork or human uh, source in that sense. So we have our registration, uh, which is very, very strict on this, and our official uh, controls and analysis are being uh, conducted vehemently and continuously in that sense. Uh, I would like to assure you of that. And also a uh, nutritious value is also important. Important uh, in that sense, uh, what type of basic nutrition uh, elements we get when we consume this product uh, are also uh, given in the table to see how much of our daily nutrition need will be met with that uh, product itself. So this, as of 2020, uh, we have uh, reformulated the legislation to have a compulsory uh, nutrition tables stated on the labels now uh, what type of uh, basic nutritional elements are included in that product. For example, um, if a consumer does not want to consume a specific type of uh, oil or fat, uh, then or a, a lot of uh, fat, uh, you can look at the nutrition table and the ingredients to see whether they decide whether they want to purchase this product or not. In that sense, uh, reading the labels are extremely important. So not just looking at the best use before date, but to be able to read the whole label is very important. And these are the best source of data about that product uh, for us. In that sense, of course, I cannot go into a lot of detail in, uh, in, in 
terms of all these uh, analyses that we make. I just want to touch upon the basic topics and the basic issues. And if we can create an awareness, even if on these basic topics, I believe the consumers and our citizens will have uh, benefited uh, for their own healthy uh, nutrition. Another important uh, notice on the labels has to do with the allergens and uh, other uh, similar warnings. Allergy is a reaction of the defense system of our body towards uh, foreign uh, materials uh, where the, the body reacts uh, adversely uh, in terms of uh, any 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 uh, outer or inner reactions in the body apart from that there is also intolerance and for example for gluten and lactose are similar uh, or, or very common among these uh, food materials that people have uh, intolerance against and these are also uh, stated in the food labels whether there are any allergens uh, in that sense or uh, intolerance materials how this is uh, done especially in the ingredients list that allergen or intolerance uh, material is stated in a different font uh, and, and maybe bold or italics within the ingredients list to attract attention that it is possible, uh, it is a possible allergen or it is a possible uh, source for intolerance as well. So we need to look at the list of ingredients in that perspective to see or note any uh, possible allergens. So uh, in that sense, uh, you might be able to avoid uh, problems later on if you will notice if there are any uh, allergen sources in the food product. So what are the products that most commonly use uh, allergen allergies or intolerances? Uh, lactose, for example, uh, this can cause uh, uh, intolerance uh, because of a lack of enzyme in the digestive system uh, to uh, digest lactose. And, and eggs, for example, uh, are is, is a common allergen. Fish, uh, fish allergies are also common. Uh, seafood allergies are uh, common. Some times there's, there are allergies against gluten, uh, wheat, uh, uh, ingredient, uh, basically. So uh, these are all uh, common uh, factors or common ingredients that might cause allergies or intolerances. So you uh, need to check, like I said, the labels uh, for the ingredients to see whether there are uh, these materials. Another topic that is commonly confused by consumers is the last consumption date and best use before date, uh, so to say. The, generally, this is the first thing that they check for in the food labels, which is correct, of course. But besides that, of course, you need to be able to read the entire label as well. What is the uh, last consumption date and what is the best use before date? Let's talk about it. Um, the last consumption date is compulsory for food that uh, are prone to micro microbiology uh, production, like uh, meat or poultry or uh, uh, dairy products, and uh, these uh, are need to be kept in the uh, refrigerator or in the freezer mostly. These products have the last consumption date. It means that you may consume this product only up to the date that is stated on the label, as long as you preserve it under the right conditions until this date. After this date, you cannot consume these products at all. So a product uh, with a last consumption date overdue should definitely not be purchased or not utilized. 
and uh, otherwise uh, you might have uh, a significant uh, adverse effects on your health. The other uh, uh, terminology is best used before date. This is different than the last consumption date in that sense. Uh, the uh, best use before date is used for products that is uh, biologically uh, not easy to corrupt like biscuits and crackers, crackers or uh, legumes or flour or uh, similar uh, products. Uh, this means that when the manufacturer prints a date, best use before date, uh, on, a, on such a product says that the product will be kept uh, uh, fresh until this date. But if it is uh, is the, the the package is not open and if it is preserved under the right conditions then and if it's there's no visible uh deformations or corruptions in the product it can be used so again the distinction for last consumption date you cannot use it before after that date uh, in any case, but best use before date if the package has not been opened, if there is no visible deformation or corruption, then you can use it. So this is very, very important to note in terms of preventing uh, food waste. Uh, this is something that we do in our homes. Mostly sometimes we look at a product which is an unopened package. It does looks good at the moment. We look at the date, uh, which is actually the best use before date, and we throw it way because it's overdue so we need to be careful about this this is also uh, true for uh, sales points uh, for example in products that have been uh, preserved under the right conditions with unopened packages with best use before uh, dates uh, these are these are sometimes uh, taken out of the shelves uh, or taken down from the shelves in that sense like I said, for best use before dates, uh, if, if they have no visible deformities and unopened packages and are kept under the right conditions, they can be uh, put to, to sales under the control and supervision of the sales point themselves. So all of these food shortage, all the crises that we had, and the recent pandemic has uh, shown us that uh, we are very vulnerable in terms of access to food. And thank God our country is very self-sufficient on this uh, at this point. And uh, we are able to uh, actually uh, feed our own uh, population as well as uh, the a wide um, number of uh, tourists and, and uh, refugees that come to our uh, country. However, we need to be very careful about food waste ourselves. And uh, any uh, products that we do not consume ourselves can be shared with those who are in need of food as well, and we can contribute to society in that say as well. The uh, last consumption date in Turkish is Sontuketim Tari, given as STT on the labels, and the other is best to be, best before date is uh, uh, T A T T is. So we have now two distinct uh, usages of terminology uh, for the uh, uh, for the labels. Uh, and a previous usage, uh, last usage date, uh, was uh, is is not used anymore. We should be careful about that. That was uh, any label you see with SKT on it is not valid. It should not be used. So it should be uh, last consumption date five. So a lot of the, the preservation conditions are also stated in the uh, labels as well, you know, uh, keep it under these conditions in refrigerator or non-humidity, so similar preservation conditions. Also, uh, 
in that sense utilization a way you know preparing uh the the consumption of these products as uh, the, the the methodology of utilization methodology is also present in the uh, labels uh, so it's very important to adhere to that uh, methodology if you use a product to be prepared with hot water if we're prepared with cold water we will not be able to consume it so it will waste so we need to be careful about that as well so uh and in brief time i wanted to uh give you a little bit information about food uh literacy to be able to preserve our health uh, to be um to be uh to have a balanced nutrition and and to prevent uh, food waste this is very very important to be able to do all that we need to be food literate we need to be able to read the labels on the foods and if we have any questions about it, uh, rather than focusing on the internet and social media and uh, say so from uh, peers, please uh, do concentrate on the information provided by the ministry. Uh, we have a hotline uh, that you can reach to us by tele uh, telephones. And again, oh, you can have the uh, food access systems. You can reach the ministry through mail, and uh, we have the telephones that you can reach us through uh, the numbers given on the website as well. And so please reach to the reach out to the correct sources in terms of food safety and food security uh, in order to be um, able to have a balanced nutrition as well as to prevent food waste. I would like to uh, say, um, last but not least, we need to be uh, careful about uh, all the data that is provided on the labels. So when we buy something, we need to check the name of the product to see whether it is the right product, as well as uh, check the uh, registration number given by the ministry, whether it is a legally produced product. We'll look at the last consumption date or best use before date. If the uh, last consumption date is overdue, we will not purchase it at all. But if the best use before date is overdue, then we will check the package, whether it is, uh, looks good and when in we can consume it in that sense. And as we purchase it, uh, we uh, we will need to make sure that we are preserving the products uh, in uh, line with the conditions stated on the label, whether it is a, a refrigerator or if it is a freezer or whether it is a non-humid cupboard. We need to look at the ingredients definitely, uh, especially if we have allergies or intolerances to check whether they're among the ingredients is anything that will cause allergies. And we need to, in that sense, be careful. Apart from that, if we are avoiding excess fat or sugar intake or we have other sensitivities, then we need to also, again, read the labels to see that uh, the uh, this product adheres to our own uh, nutrition uh, habits. Another important uh, thing for the consumers to be careful about is that, you know, of course, uh, food safety and food assurance is important. You know, the, the increasing population, shortage of water and uh, climate change. And like I said, thank God this is not the case for our country any, uh, at the moment, but for many countries in the world, there are a lot of insecurities in terms of uh, access to uh, food. Uh, so, Please buy as much of the products, only as much as we need, uh, that we can consume in that sense. Uh, so, like I said, uh, preservation conditions are important, how we preserve that food uh, until we consume it. Uh, and, uh, of of course, we need to be careful about how to utilize the products. And of course, uh, we need to be, uh, we should not forget to wash, especially uh, raw consumed food like salads. And of course, to wash our hands before and after all procedures in that sense. And uh, of course, you can reach out to our ministry by mail or phone or uh, the um, 
the information center of the uh, office of the presidency and uh, there uh, all your questions if you have questions will be answered very uh, quickly and very extensively as well thank you very much for your attention and uh, and hopefully in a longer time with you we will have the chance to talk about all of these topics in more detail even thank you very much we would like to thank Selim for his uh, very valuable insight and information. And we'd like to thank all of our speakers and participants once again. I, we believe it was a very fruitful meeting for everyone, for a more sustainable, more healthy tomorrow for everyone. Uh, such meetings, such webinars will uh, be a benefit for overall uh, increase of awareness for society. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you.